it was a proud moment for Jayanto and Nupur Ray. Their first born Oshika had gotten into Oxford. The Rays were your normal educated Indian expats living a comfortable life in UK. Jayanto, an IT professional, his wife Nupur, a teacher, and their two daughters, Oshika and Ushmita. Like all Indian parents, they wanted their children to get the best education and have a successful life. Their dream was about to come true. But during her final year at Oxford, Oishi came home and declared that she has been diagnosed with multiple disorders. Um, unused creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. It turns into rage, um, sorrow, um, judgment and shame. Um, and I've experienced those feelings quite a lot personally um, because I have ADHD, um, dyspraxia, um, as well as anxiety and depression. It's a personal journey for me. You know, there was denial. But then I, I got to know about it and slowly started recognizing it. She went through medication, meditation, counseling. But one of the things which really, really helped her was music. Music has always been something that I've used to kind of distract myself from like the noise going on in my brain. The way in which it's changed my moment to moment experience of living has been kind of untold. Um, I'm very grateful for that. Learning to play the drums was a visceral experience that changed Roshi's life and brought back sunshine to her parents' lives. The story could have ended here. But unlike many others who would have preferred to keep all of it under wraps, the Rays decided to fight it and talk about it to spread awareness. And in this battle, music and the arts was their weapon of choice. And why is that? Because we are big time into music, we love our music. So we just thought, why not combine the two together and see what we can come up with. Yes, and how many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. So Nupur and Joyanto answered the questions by co-founding Sangeet Foundation, their third child, in January 2015. This is what we do because we believe in happiness through music and the arts. And this is to create awareness about mental health and to see how we can address mental health using the music and the arts. So the message is be aware. And main, main thing is to talk about it so that you can reach out for help, help and get that help. In general, not feel ashamed about it. I think that's what we are trying to do. It's nothing to be ashamed of and it happens and if it happens then we need to deal with it. That's the whole idea. Introducing Oshmita who describes herself as um, and I'm probably one of the lesser sported members of the Ray family. And in her own way she likes to contribute to the cause. Oh, he's deaf, mummy. Kikujanli? Ha, I am deaf. Oh I was wondering. I was wondering why he could be, he really like jumped when he saw me. Hey. Hey. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. So I was interested in how bad it actually is a problem, especially specifically within the community. So I looked up a survey done across eight states in India. 68% of people think that people with mental illnesses shouldn't be given any responsibility. 60% of people think that mental illness is caused by a lack of self-discipline or a lack of willpower. Looking at these statistics, I was really shocked because I think they're definitely reflective of a wider cultural attitude and a very damaging cultural attitude towards mental health. So it is specifically aimed at the Asian community because we don't really like to talk about mental health. I think the more we talk about it, the more awareness we create. Sangeet Foundation uses a four-fold strategy. 
Firstly, to hold live programs with well-known performing artists and celebrities from UK, India, the Americas and other South Asian countries. Secondly, holding workshops and panel discussions with mental health experts, including psychiatrists, psychologists, counsellors and people who have undergone this experience. Thirdly, to conduct research projects on mental health, creative arts, music and media in partnership with universities like De Montfort University in Leicester, South Asia Institute of SOAS in London and other research foundations. And finally, to engage and collaborate with governmental bodies like NHS Trust charities and non-governmental organizations across UK and India. When the coronavirus pandemic hit the world in the year 2020, Sangeet Foundation harnessed the power of social media and did musical programs, art workshops, discussions and interviews with eminent people about mental health awareness. Over the last couple of years, we have seen how the digital platforms have also influenced people's happiness. There was new invented happiness where communities were supporting each other, coming together and standing by the side of each other, whether they be delivering food parcels or um, delivering medicines. In the year 2021, Sangeet Foundation was granted charity status by Charity Commission UK and is today registered as Sangeet Global Limited. Today, Sangeet Foundation is reaching out live to people who need help. Realize over the past two years is the huge importance about our mental health. James Ray and his team are putting on a very special musical mental health event titled Hues of Happiness. What we are trying to do is we are celebrating International Happiness Day and Holi. So which is why we are calling this program Hues of Happiness or Colors of Happiness. Sangeet Foundation provides a platform to share life experiences without being judged. It is about giving people a voice, a voice of the marginalized, a voice to people who suffer from stigma, stigma of mental health. When 18-year-old Sharanya spoke about her struggles, one could feel her pain. Ever since probably 13 years old, I've been experiencing depression and anxiety and uh, I wish I could say that there's uh, an antidote to all of this but there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Not hating yourself for feeling inferior or hating yourself for not being like um, your the other family, friends, daughters and sons. One of my biggest achievements in my 21 years of life is getting my parents to stop comparing me to other people, especially our family friends. What my sister and I really worked at getting them to realize was that people's lives can seem so perfect on the outside, but you have no idea as to what's going on mentally. You have no idea as to what's going on in their heads. Feeling sad is also okay and just to feel your emotions is really important and probably the most cathartic thing that you could do. The reason why we stigmatize people in mental illness is because we don't understand them. This is actually to you, Sharanya. <coughs> so it's all right to lag behind. Your time will come. But never ever get any negative thoughts into your head. But the biggest thing is self-belief. Never mm -hmm. let anything push you back, okay? And the other thing is, never lose your self-confidence. To add uh, to Sharanya's experience, I was 14 when I lost my mother. My father was very, well, very much depressed. He used to, you know, take several suicidal attempts. But I do have a husky voice, the reason being, I couldn't sing, I couldn't talk for seven years as I overused my voice in crying. I used to cry at night. But what kept me motivated throughout this journey was music. Meet Narun. He loves his dal, rice and chicken curry. He becomes emotional every time he listens to Amir Khan's Papa Kehte Hai. He can time travel to another era without any technology, just by listening to Indian classical music. There are some special people, special children or students like Narun. The joy I see in him Listening to Ragyaman, 
I don't see in any, you know, any of the students, to be very honest, in my class. What I'm trying to say is that classical music, it just takes away the element of stressing so much. It isolates you from all your problems around you. And that's probably the one thing I'd suggest to all people fighting or dealing with mental illness, is just listen to yourself. Because I'm pretty sure that listening to yourself is going to be the one and only remedy that actually works when it comes to dealing with mental health. Be flexible. Don't be like, oh, I've got to get these big A stars. My parents are expecting so much from me. You need to be flexible, you know? Have a flexible mindset. That's another cure to everything. Thank you, Narun. I like the point that you made about flexibility. Very important. And having battled depression myself, I can vouch for the fact, as I'm sure a lot of people will, uh, music truly helps, helps to heal the mind, helps to heal the soul. Resilience building has got a lot to do with adaptability. So you've got a new situation, you know, somebody um, moves their house, somebody moves to school, they go into a completely new environment. How does that child cope, you know? That's a thing that we can teach. Aditya was both excited and skeptical just before joining college. He was nervous about adapting to a multicultural environment, making new friends and meeting the expectations of his college teachers. Soon, it got out of hand and... Unintentionally, I did not realize this for a couple of seconds, I was already having severe anxiety and occasionally depression. And I, I was no longer smiling and being happy anymore. Um, but the situation kept on escalating, escalating and escalating to the point where I realized that I needed some help. So I decided to turn to music as a way to cope with these problems. It was at this point, when looking for music, I discovered the ancient, possibly thousands of years ancient, but also powerful mantras and stotrams of the Hindu gods. There was one I remember called Shiv Tandava Stotram. I listened to it, desperate for a source of de-stressing, from the problems of my life and desperate for a source of peace, just peace. I put on the headphones, I sat in the lotus position and it's unexplainable even to this day. I feel refreshed, happy and much more focused. It's not just, it's not just thanks to the music but it's, also, but it's also thanks to, you know, the sheer will. In fact, I know this sounds silly but there's always a quote I remember from a Batman film. It just may sound silly, but there's a quote where one of the characters says, the training is nothing, will is everything. Isn't it? One of the things that we have found is that children can link very well to the stories of their life if you, as a parent, tell them the story in your own words. In a way, what you're trying to teach them is how to understand what is right and what is wrong, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Music or art or any other forms uh, which are complementary to, for example, biomedicine, uh, is uh, they create a third space, not a space of you and I sitting together. There is a third aspect called music, art, drama or silence and even silence is therapy as long as you're with them as a normal sane person it is very easy to say think positive well possibly a person who is depressed doesn't know what positive is right be hopeful don't know what hopeful is so what do you do as a person when you are talking to someone who is going through a, a state of depression is probably i would like to know myself only those who wear the shoes know where it pinches. I have gone through uh, depression too, but uh, that's why I might be able to uh, describe. But uh, it, this is very important to recognize that these people don't have a voice. We, when we are depressed, we lose the voice. Now, let me tell you that clinical depression is a real condition. It's not unhappiness gone bad. So antidepressants have a role to play in the right place. And in most other situations in psychiatry where medication is indicated, it works best in combination with talking therapies. So there are three Ps. 
when it becomes pervasive, protracted, and persistent, that it affects you as an individual, and in terms of mental health, affects people around you. When somebody starts behaving out of character, and if that is getting worse day on day, if anything is out of proportion, out of context, continuing and severe, seek professional help. Organizations and people who believe in this cause joined this journey and came together as a team. We have with us celebrated filmmaker and actor Padmashri Aparna Shain. I think Shongit Foundation is doing wonderful work in the area of mental health. Acclaimed music composer and tabla maestro Pandit Bikram Ghosh. Namaskar, I am Bikram Ghosh and I'd like to congratulate Sangeet Foundation for the wonderful work they're doing. Renowned singer and everyone's favorite Didi, Padmashri Usha Uttup. Hi everybody, Namaskar, Namaskaram, Sat Sri Kaal, Salaam Alaikum. I'm Usha Uttup and I'm your Didi and I'd like for all of you to please join us, that is join Jayanturi. Let us all get together because Sangeeta Foundation believes in the fact that we can all get together by supporting the performing arts and music. Don't forget about that. Please, because music brings the world together. Revered Razal Maestro and Bhajan Samrat Padmashri Anub Janota. In Sangeet Foundation, we have been with us and we have been with us and we have been with us. Thank you. Life coach, singer, actor, and happiness ambassador of Sangeet Foundation, Pilu Vidyarthi. Namaskar. As the happiness ambassador of Sangeet Foundation, it's my privilege uh, to be associated with this initiative. Sangeet Foundation is, I really, I mean, today's event about the mental health. They're given the tips to everybody in the audience that how we can get rid of our depression, how we can live in peace. Sangeet Foundation UK is marking mental wellness along with music to celebrate and to speak about what is extremely critical to really be spoken about. Mental wellness can do with a lot more sunlight, with candor and some unashamed conversations. What I like about uh, Sangeet Foundation is that it is mandated to work for mental health awareness using um, arts and music as a complementary therapy. We believe in uh, happiness through music. So Sangeet Foundation believes in happiness through music and the arts. Um, so obviously we try to spread happiness, work with people who have in some kind of a mental illness and we assume that music and the arts do help them. One is the platform of Sangeet Foundation, which joins uh, two important aspects. One is the performing arts and one is the creative arts and then celebrating the uh, mental health awareness. So it, it's my pleasure to be associated with Sangeet Foundation. This is a foundation that uses, uh, you know, online programs, musical programs to promote the awareness of mental health. You know, it's a very, very common thing and we should talk about it. We should address this and help each other out. Yeah, uh, Sangeet Foundation is taking, making work at grassroots levels to embed mental health care, treatment, and fitness for everyone. Way back in the 90s, there was a friend of mine who he had the bipolar, so I knew it, and uh, I was his uh, helpline. And I used to tell him that whenever he hit that low, you know, he should uh, call me. And we used to talk, so about many years, I was able to, you know, just uh, listen to what he had to say. And then uh, one day he didn't call me, and, threw himself in front of a train and uh, it's a journey of discovery for me and uh, in this process if I can uh, uh, not change but uh, impact your life uh, in a positive way and then I think it will be well worth and uh, that is why I'm here. And many many more are joining us as we speak. Conversations are beginning to happen. We look forward to the day when we will be able to talk about our mental health issues 
without shame and without stigma. There's a song called Brain Damage. And in that, it says, if the band starts playing a different tune, I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. And the dark side of the moon is where I come from. I come from a place where I want to give a voice to those who don't have one, those who are marginalized, disenfranchised from the community. And if the band you're in starts playing